This video will cover exploring the LAS dataset toolbar in ArcMap, as is covered in Chapter 8 of the book, Working with LiDAR Using ArcGIS Desktop, which is available as an ebook on Amazon. Following the instructions in the beginning of Chapter 8 in the book, you'll want to download the four different Kentucky datasets from Earth Explorer and create one LAS dataset. You're also going to want to make sure that you have your 3D Analyst extension turned on, and I'm turning on Spatial Analyst as well. And finally, to prepare, go ahead and turn on that LAS dataset toolbar and dock it on your map wherever you like. Before we get started, you'll notice that our data percentage is at zero and we can't see any points, and that's because this is such a large data set. So we're going to zoom in to the southeast corner, and this is the corner of our data set we're going to be working with mostly in this tutorial. And you can kind of vaguely make out buildings here. So I'm going to take a look here at the filters drop down, and here I can change which returns I want displayed. So I've started with ground, I can select non-ground, first return, and before I proceed I'm going to go back to all returns. The next thing I can do is take a look at these symbolization buttons. So here I can select elevation and this is going to go off of whatever filters I already selected under the filters drop down, so just keep that in mind. As you can see we can look at how many returns we have there on the left hand side in our table of contents when we're displaying the returns. And again your book goes into this in more detail Lastly, I'm going to go back, make sure I've got all selected, and check out this next display button. And that will allow me to look at things like elevation, aspect, slope, or contour. And here I'm just going to take a look at what the elevation looks like when I have all returns versus when I have just my ground returns showing. And then I'm going to skip aspect and slope, those are covered in your book, and show you how contours look. We're also going to check out these pan buttons here, left, right, up or down. You can see when I click, and I've sped the sequence up a, a little bit, um, I'm skipping a pretty large area. So I can go into my data set options and go to pan options, and I could type in there instead of it being a thousand meter jump, when I hit the pan button I could make it something smaller if I wanted to. So last I'm going to go back to my full extent and zoom back in again to that corner of the map that we're working with. So now we're going to start making elevation profiles. So go back and change your display to elevation and then you're going to want to go to your LAS profile button which is on the right hand side of your toolbar. And if you left click anywhere on the map it's going to create a line that you can drag out, you left click again to end the line, and then you can drag your cursor out to create a depth of your look line. And when I click left again, click left a third time, it creates this profile of my point clouds for that line that I just drew on the map. So we'll be working with this in a little bit more detail. So I'm going to close this box for now. Um, as you're working with this, you may have noticed in the top left corner that it tells me how many points are included in my box. I can actually change my point budget. I could make it larger or smaller. And the reason that this might become important is that I may go to create a profile that is too large for my point budget, and I get that little symbol there, the circle with the crosshairs through it, which means I can't click again and create the profile. So I'd want to increase my point budget in that instance. Next we're going to come up, make sure we have filters set back to all before we proceed to try to match up our profiles that we're going to create with the book. And this corner here where I'm clicking, this is the area noted in your book where you want to create four different profiles, each pointing or looking, so to speak, in a different direction. Check and make sure that they match with the same profile that are shown in the book. And this will help you gain some practice in thinking about where you're standing in the map when you go to create those profile lines. From here you're gonna then uh, want to take a little bit more time to practice creating these profile views and see if you can match up with some of the profiles that are shown later on in that same section of chapter 8. And here on these last two you can see the outlines of the mobile home rooftops pretty clearly. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a profile, I'm just going to go over here on the map, 
And uh, here with this profile I've created, you can see some trees, you can see the topography there, mostly in yellow, and you can see a couple rooftops, you can even see some vehicles. And we're going to look at some of these tools on the profile view toolbar. So if I click the info button, and then I click on any point in my point cloud, it's going to pull up information about that particular point. Um, and there's a lot of points here, so if I click the flash button, it'll actually flash and I can see which point it is that I'm looking at the information for. Under profile view options, here I can change just the way that this profile looks. I can change the background color, I can change the point size factor, making the points larger or smaller. Just change that around to suit my purposes. And then the last button we're going to look at briefly here is the edit button and this allows us to change class codes and we're going to be dealing with this more in a future chapter but just so we know where it is. So finally I'm going to close out of the profile view and I'm going to come to the dataset 3D view button and this is going to create a 3D view of whatever's shown in my entire map document. I sped up the process here, it actually will take a little while. So what's showing my map document window behind it is now in a 3D view. And I have my 3D tools there, but I also have my typical zoom in and zoom out buttons. And you can see the water body, you can make out treetops, and uh, if I get zoomed in too far, I can always go back to the full extent button just like I can in my map document. So that wraps it up for chapter 8. We will be using this same data set of Hopkinsville, Kentucky for chapter 9 when we will cover the 3D Analyst Toolbar in ArcMap. This video was produced by Virginia View, a consortium dedicated to promoting remote sensing, outreach, education, and research with funding from the America View Consortium in partnership with Virginia Geospatial Extension and GeoTED.